What is going on guys? Welcome back to Luke's Goldies. In this video, I'm going to explain how to start your first beginner goldfish tank. Let's get into the video. Okay, now that you've pressed the like button and pressed the subscribe button, I'm going to tell you how I think any beginner should start their first goldfish tank. So the first thing you're going to need is a tank. You're going to need to get a tank. My recommendation for an easy, solid, not overly too big, not you know too small of a tank is a 40 gallon tank. If you get a 40 gallon tank and you have two goldfish in that tank, in the long term you're going to find you only really need to do water changes about once a week. You could go a little bit smaller, but you're, you're going to need to do more water changes. It will be harder. Uh, you could go bigger. I recommend if you can go bigger, go bigger. But you know, a lot of people can't afford a larger than a 40 gallon tank or, or have space for that. The next thing you're going to need for your goldfish tank is filtration. Now goldfish tanks especially need a lot of filtration because goldfish are massive waste producers. As cute as Chicken Steve looks, he poops a ton. The main classes of filters are sponge filters, canister filters, hang on back filters, and then also some submersible filters. The ones I recommend for someone on a budget is sponge filters. Sponge filters are definitely the cheapest option and they're also very simple. You just need to buy an air pump and then you're gonna need to buy some sponge filters that connect to that air pump and filter out the water. For a 40 gallon tank with two goldfish, honestly getting a four outlet air pump with sponge filters connected at all four outlets, uh, you're gonna have a pretty decent size filtration. It's gonna be more than you need, but you always wanna shoot for over filtering. If you wanna go for a canister filter, you could probably get uh, a Whale 350. I, I believe that canister filter moves around 340 gallons per hour, which will be pretty decent for a 40 gallon size goldfish tank with two goldfish in it. Or you could get a hang on back filter. I have right now on my tank an Emperor hang on back filter, and they're pretty decent, they do the job, but I do notice they do tend to make a lot of noise. When the water level starts to fall, oxygen bubbles get stuck in the intake tube and you'll hear a little ch -ch -ch. And they honestly, they are really starting to annoy me. So honestly, canister filters and sponge filters, those will probably, either one of those will do it. The next thing you're gonna need is some Luke's Goldies merch. There's like a crazy phenomenon going on. Like if you don't wear Luke's Goldies merch when you buy goldfish, they all die. Like I, I, don't, I don't. If you're keeping goldfish, you gotta you gotta represent it. You gotta be proud of it. Go check out our merch. Okay, so after you buy your tank and your filter, you're now gonna need some aquarium products. The one absolutely necessary aquarium product you're gonna need is a water conditioner. Water conditioner I use right now is Fritz Complete, and this is a pretty decent one because it doesn't only condition water and takes care of chlorines, chloramines, uh, but it also will detoxify ammonia and nitrite, which is something you're likely gonna have a problem with, especially when you're first starting a tank. I also recommend getting a beneficial bacteria that you can add into the water to really help get that tank cycled up. Right now, the beneficial bacteria I use is Fritz Turbo Start. This stuff smells like the worst crap you've ever smelled but that means it's good, it's full of that beneficial bacteria that's gonna get your tank cycled. The next thing you're gonna need is a water testing kit. Right now I use the API fresh water testing kit. That thing basically measures ammonia, measures nitrite, measures nitrate, and also measures pH levels. And that's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to track, especially when you're first starting a tank. Now there are probably a bunch of other aquarium products you will eventually need, but to really get started, the basic things you need are that testing kit, that water conditioner, and that beneficial bacteria. One aquarium product that's not required, but I highly recommend getting is a Python water changer. This is gonna make it so easy to do your water changes, which, are some, which is something you're gonna have to do very often as a goldfish keeper. So once you have your Python water changer, your tank, your filter, and your aquarium products, you're then basically gonna fill your tank up with water, with the Python water changer, and then you're gonna add some of that water conditioner to get that water nice and conditioned. You're gonna add your filtration system on there, whether that's your air pumps and your air filter or your canister filter, and then you're gonna add your beneficial bacteria to the system with the filters running to seed the bacteria to the filters to get it ready to handle the massive bio load it's gonna get from the goldfish. After you add beneficial bacteria, you're also gonna to have to add some sort of decaying matter or source of ammonia to the water system to help that beneficial bacteria grow and fester in the filter systems so it can eventually handle the bio load of the goldfish. You can either A, crush up some of your food that you're gonna feed your goldfish and put it into that tank, let it rot, and let that ammonia spike, and then let the filters develop after that, or you can buy straight up ammonium chloride and add that to the water. Now, the full process of tank cycling is a little more complicated. I highly recommend reading up on it. In short, you're gonna be adding in the ammonia at some form into the tank 
testing the water to see the ammonia spike and then watching it slowly convert into nitrite and then the ammonia levels go down and then watching that nitrite go to nitrate and then continually adding more ammonia to watch the quick conversion from ammonia to nitrate. And you wanna make sure that you basically have zero ammonia at all times in the tank because this will ensure that it'll create a safe environment for your fish, which is constantly producing ammonia, but can't live in really any concentration of it. Okay, so now you started the cycling process for your tank. Other things you can get during this probably three week span if you add in additional beneficial bacteria is you can go out and buy a water heater. I definitely recommend getting a water heater for your goldfish. I like to keep my fancy goldfish around 78 degrees. Sometimes you can keep a little lower around 75 degrees, but they do tend to get kind of some swim water problems when temperatures drop down too low. So I like to keep them at an elevated temperature. It's not absolutely necessary, but I do highly recommend it to avoid swim water problems. Also during this time, you can go and buy some meds that you might need. Some of the medications I use very often are one, aquarium salt. I don't even really consider that a medication, but I do use it anytime I notice something possibly wrong with my fish, uh, mainly externally. I highly recommend having aquarium salt in your medicine cabinet for your fish. Also, I highly recommend methylene blue. Methylene blue is very good for many different instances in your fish. It's great as a bath or hospital tank treatment if your fish ever gets sick. There are a ton of other medications out there you're gonna need. I would honestly recommend wait till you need a specific kind of medication and go and buy that medication because there's gonna be so many different possible problems you can have with your fish. It's not worth going and buying everything ahead of time. Uh, just wait until you notice something and going buy that. You're gonna spend tons of money on meds if you try to preemptively buy everything you need. I actually recommend to not add the substrate in until after you get the goldfish because if you get goldfish and they do arrive with some worms, um, it's a lot easier to keep the bottom of the tank nice and clean if you have no substrate in there. If you're gonna have to clean the worms off the bottom of the tank, it's easier to kind of have the tank be nice bare bottom and then add in a substrate later. Uh, I actually believe I'm dealing with a worm problem right now, so I actually had to remove all the sand from the bottom of my tanks. Now you don't need to add a sand or substrate to your tank, but I do think it does kind of provide a nice area for the fish to kind of sift through and kind of like, you know, look through the entire day to give them something to do. And I also think that it does kind of hold a lot of beneficial bacteria and makes the cycle of the tank a little more stable. You don't have to have a substrate, but I think it's good. Now also in terms of decor, Again, I don't think you need decor. In a lot of instances, I actually don't recommend a lot of decor because it's very easy for the fish to bump into it and get stuck with it. Especially these fancy goldfish, they're very clumsy, they're very dumb. I love them, but they're dumb. And they find a lot of ways to get stuck and hurt on decor. If you're gonna have decor in your tanks, make it very smooth, little little stones or nice little wavy plants or something. I, for the most part, don't have any decor and plants in my tank because I just tend to have a lot of problems with it. I might try other plants in the future, but I just never have success with it. Okay, so now it's finally time for you to buy your goldfish. So the goldfish that I don't breed myself, I get from Goldfish Island. And full disclosure here, I am a brand affiliate of Goldfish Island. So when you guys click on my affiliate link I have in my description uh, or use my discount code Luke, I do get a percent share of that sale. So thank you if you do that. Uh, but no, in full honesty, I do highly recommend their fish. I, I've gotten a lot of fish from them. They always arrive in nice, good quality. I've never had a dead one on arrival. I would definitely recommend checking them out. And as I said, you can get 5% off your order total if you use that discount code Luke. So after you get your goldfish and you release them into your tank, you've acclimated them properly, I would recommend doing prophylactic treatments to deworm them and get them rid of parasites. It is a very high probability they come with some degree of parasites. Now this quarantine process can be as simple as honestly just you know turning up the temperature to 82 degrees and adding one tablespoon of salt per five gallons and just kind of leaving it that way for about a month or two. Uh, or it could be a little more intense where you treat the water with praziquantel, you treat it with levomisole, and you maybe even feed them a metronidazole medicated feed. Um, I can go into more detailed videos in the future on how to really fully quarantine a fish, uh, but it's a very complicated and very variable process. Okay, so after you've quarantined your fish for four, eight weeks maybe, um, honestly, here on out, you can go and add in some substrate in there. Make sure you thoroughly rinse it out before adding it to your tank or it'll make a mess. In terms of a diet for your goldfish, you're gonna wanna feed them around two to four times a day. Um, maybe only make one of these feedings a pellet feeding and then make the other feedings a veggie feeding. You know, these guys like to eat a lot, a lot of veggies. So I recommend give them a little bit of pellets every day, give them some veggies, and then once in a while, maybe give them also some frozen bloodworms or frozen brine shrimp. Some of the vegetables I love to feed my goldfish are boiled and deshelled peas, boiled broccoli, 
boiled spinach, and also some boiled cucumber. Hmm, cucumber. There are a ton of other vegetables and, you know, eggs and stuff like that you can feed to your goldfish. I would highly recommend researching that. Uh, but one thing you definitely want to make sure is keep that diet varied up. Goldfish in the wild eat a lot of veggies. Make sure you replicate that as well in your tanks. In terms of water changes, I recommend doing probably one large volume water change every single week. You're going to need to do around maybe an 80% water change on your tank. And I'd recommend, again, using that water conditioner when you fill up with new water. Make sure the new water in that tank is nearly the exact same temperature as the water that that's already in the tank. And then uh, if you take out a lot of the water and you're worried about the cycle not being super stabilized, you can add in some extra beneficial bacteria to keep the cycle of that filter a little more stable. That water testing kit's gonna come really in handy here uh, because you're able to test the nitrate level. And anytime that nitrate level starts creeping above 25, 30, 40 ppm of nitrates, you're gonna wanna do a large water change. Get that down to five or 10 ppm of nitrates. You wanna get that nitrate level always as down as possible. If you're noticing that at the end of the week it gets above 40 ppm of nitrates, maybe you wanna scale back the temperature a little bit. Maybe you wanna scale back the feeding a little bit because that means there's too much waste being created in your your tank and that nitrate level is building up too quickly for it to be healthy for your fish. At least once a month there's going to be some sort of filter maintenance you're going to have to do. You're going to have to probably squeeze those sponge filters. You want to make sure you get in a separate bucket with tank water. Never clean out your filters with fresh chlorinated water because you'll kill all that beneficial bacteria in there. So squeeze the sponge filters or the filter paddings in your canister filter in tank water and then put them back on your filters or back in your tanks. If you have multiple sponge filters, only clean one or two of them at a time so you maintain some sort of cycle stability and not cleaning all of them at once because then you might have ammonia spike in your tank once you turn the whole system back on. So there's probably a lot of little details along the way that I missed. So after watching this video, definitely go out and do your own research on top of this. Do not have this video be the only source of information that you use to start your tank, um, but have it be maybe a starting point to go out and then, okay, maybe I'm gonna research, well, what kind of tank sh size should I get? And research some other things to really make sure that you're making correct decisions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I wish you guys a ton of luck in starting your own goldfish tank. Uh, I'm going to be making more of these educational videos down the line to help you guys really, you know, create a nice solid environment for your fish and keep them well. I almost forgot broccoli on the carpet.